What's up, everybody? Jason here for jazbeescasebreaks.com. 2020 Bowman Draft of Baseball is here, guys. New release day. We are breaking our first case of the morning. It's around 8 a.m., guys, Pacific Standard Time. We are doing an eight-box jumbo case break. Pick your team's number one. And again, as it states in the item description, guys, before you buy, no paper base will ship except for these four prospects here. Uh, Kerstad, Veen, Torkelson, and Hassel. No other exceptions. Just remember, guys, we don't keep this to ourselves and just resell it and keep it. Uh, we do donate all this to charity, and then we also donate the proceeds to charity. If you guys know, we always have these little charity boxes that we do with a lot of our paper base and a lot of our veteran base. Uh, but just know everything else, of course, uh, will be shipping. All the chrome, the color, numbered cards, everything. Just accept some of the paper base uh, from all these other players that... That do pop out, but only these ones here will be shipping. And again, guys, a lot of these 2020 Bowman draft, uh, uh, sorry, these 2020 draft picks are in this uh, uh, set here. And I was kind of going through the list right here with some customers, and there's a lot of great prospects here, guys. A lot. So here we go. Got the case right here. Here's the customer names. Last spot mojo, Travis getting the Cardinals. Which one of the big prospects for the Cardinals we were talking about is Jordan Walker. So hopefully we can pull some Jordan Walker for, for Travis. And again, this is just the first case of the day. Um, I'm here till 1 o'clock for about, what, another 5 hours? Then Joe gets here. He'll do 1 to 9. And then after 9 o'clock, of course, Sean goes on. And again, we have that little promo for some of these pick your team breaks where if we were to sell out all 12 pick your teams by the end of the night, we'll give away up to $1,500 in break credit. Number one getting, I believe, 750. Number two getting 500. Number three getting 100. And I think four through six get 100, but uh, 50 bucks. And again, this is the jumbo edition. Uh, Super jumbo is a six box case. And I mean, I, there's a reason why they call it Super jumbo. But this is also still a great value, too. And again, you guys know me. I love me some baseball, but not really so into the prospect world. But I do know the hobby. And I do know that uh, some of these prospects, man, can go for some really, really good money. And again, of course, we're just hoping that these guys turn out to be uh, superstars in the MLB. And if if there's going to be any cards you're going to chase in the future of these guys, when they have established themselves in the MLB, it's going to be this product here. The first edition autographs. So most of these guys might not be on the roster this upcoming season. Some of these guys will take a couple years. You know, some of these guys are just 18, 17 years old coming out of high school. But, of course, doesn't mean that they can't uh, can become superstars later in their career. With baseball, you know, it's kind of rare when you see someone the age of 18, 19 make it to the league and just start succeeding so young. Kind of have to get through some hoops. Bogey, what's going on? Um, Austin Martin. Um, sounds familiar. Was that the guy on the Yankees? Or am I thinking of something else? Jays. Okay, there you go. I was thinking of some other guy. I know there was a Yankees player that I think started with Austin. I was thinking of Austin Wells. That's what I was thinking of. Alrighty. What's up, Ryan? How's it going, buddy? Yeah, remember some of these first, of course, could be in Bowman Baseball. I mean, they could be in Bowman Chrome. They can be in a lot of other products throughout the year, but Bowman Draft, of course, is pretty much for the main draft picks that uh, get drafted in 2020. I'm thinking 2021. But you can find more draft picks, of course, in Bowman Baseball later this uh, upcoming year. And then after the summer with Bowman, with Bowman Chrome. Uh, Dayton, the 11-box football mixer, was that the Toys for Tots one? 
Um, I know Joe late at night had announced that he wasn't going to do it, but he ended up doing it. So if you go to our YouTube page, uh, videos part, you should see the videos uploaded there. Um, but yeah, should be there if that's the one you're talking about. Oregon helmet? I think he did that one yesterday, actually. As well. I think he did both of those mixtures yesterday. If you want to look it up. I don't think that's on the page at all, so I'm assuming we already did that yesterday. If you want to look through the videos. The bolt up. I think he definitely did that one yesterday at some at middle of the day or so. Tony, what's going on, man? Oh, okay, well, I could I could try to help you out, man. Maybe after this break. It's going to take me about an hour, though, but it should be there. I think I think maybe you just got to type it in, if anything, because uh, I think there would be more people asking uh, where it was if, if, uh, if it wasn't there. So I'm sure it's in there somewhere. Well, I'll definitely help you out, man, if I, if I can uh, after this. How many cards per box? A lot, bogey. But you do get three autographs. Three autographs per per box, though. I think that's what we want to uh, <laughs> want to uh, know, rather than the cards. No problem, Dave. Good luck if you see the video and you're in it. Well, I don't think nothing's ever guaranteed, Brett, but I believe it's at least three autos. Um, on average, they're probably going to say on every box just to save themselves. But I think you're supposed to get three for sure. Uh, I think... I can't say that Tops has never messed up, but for the most part, I think it's usually three autographs per box. All right, well, like I said, I'm going to try to kind of fly through this, but this first box... Just so we can get a little feel uh, for some of these players. And like I said, if I miss one of the four or five players that were supposed to uh, penny sleeve and ship, let me know. We got Justin Lang. Is that Cam Kimbelli? We got Dabovich to 150. Corey Lee. Once I once I uh, once I get used to the photos, there's that Jordan, there's Jordan Walker right there. Once I get used to the photos, uh, it'll be much easier to look for these guys. And then we got Carson Tucker to four ninety nine. Let's see, it's a little chipped right there. So some of these paper cards, guys, since they are such thin stock. Um, you get a little damage sometimes. The chromes, of course, thicker stock, so easier to uh, stay good. Yeah, I think we'll fill that, man. I, I don't think we'll have no problem. Man, I hate when Joe does this. Hold on, guys. This camera doesn't need to be that big. <laughs> you can stay like that. There's that Spencer Torkelson. So there's a first paper. Justin Lang. 
York, Ashby, and Dylan Dingler. Man, that would have been great if those Torkels in, right? Out of 499. Uh, Rory with the Detroit Tigers. There's our first auto. There's that Heston Kerstad. There's Zach Veen. Just missing Hassel, right? Dominguez, Rollison. Logan Allen first, Liam Norris, and Logan Hoffman. Derek, no man, I'm I'm good to go, man. Of course, I appreciate the pack stacking, but I like to savor it and do it all myself when it comes to Bowman, Bowman Chrome and Bowman baseball. It's just always so much fun. I'm just more trying to get in sync with some of these uh, prospects photos, so that way um, my brain can register like Torkelson photo and Veen and and Hassel and Kurtzstadt, so that way I can start more flying through these papers. <clears throat> so this first box or so I'm gonna try to just focus on kind of remembering some of these guys' photos so that way it's much easier to fly through the paper since most of that won't be shipping besides those guys well, there's hassle right there but like I said it's just the paper base guys and if for some reason I do miss some paper um, I, I, I usually what I honestly like to do guys I like to go back and look at some of these base papers especially when it's someone like uh, some of these prospects that uh, we are shipping so that way um, I don't miss them and we don't ship them out so don't worry though guys if I miss something all right let's see we got a speckle coming up there's that castle or sorry Robert Hassel Jay Groom and Spencer Strider for the Braves, one of the last few teams taken. That's an orange 19 out of 25. Hi, right, Derek. Let's do it, man. Let's get that number two rolling. There you go. A little orange. I do like that they just incorporated like refractors throughout the product. That's going to kind of boost the value of some of these players just to have the refractors.
Chief, fine. And Cole Henry for the Washington Nationals. Going to Darby. Oh, Spencer. Swaggerty, fine. Alrighty guys, so there you go. First box in the books. Like I said, I do like that they are giving us a lot of refractor first. And just refractors in general. Like I said, now that the world is really pretty much grading a lot of these cards. Um, you know. These PSA 10s wouldn't look, too, wouldn't look too bad, right? Boost the value up. So now that you know that there's a lot of these refractors. That can actually be to an advantage for some of these players. So it's actually not too much chrome. Not too much chrome. In there. So let's get a lot of it is paper. All right, next box, guys. So I might try through five through this a little bit faster this time. Like I said, if I miss any one of the four players, um, I'll come back and, and pull those through the papers. I mean, come back and pull those off camera. And I'm trying to uh, help the shipping team out, so I'm already also um, splitting up the paper from the Chrome, so that way uh, the shipping team doesn't even have to worry about it. We just start getting to work and shipping these out as quickly as possible to you guys. Ten left in random team. There you go, man. So we could definitely do some random team after this, guys. Evan Carter for Texas. Mark Vassetti with that one. Was not uploaded, SV. Okay, man. Well, I can't upload it right now for you guys, but... Once I get done with this break, I will make sure that we upload it uh, the second time. So that way you guys can see what's going on. But it should have been, though. And if anybody else may have seen it, for some reason it's just not popping up, from other customers, let them know. So... Little PSA, guys. If someone, if we missed it, if if we missed it and we didn't upload it, don't worry, guys. I'll upload it right now once I get done with this break. Ice right, Brett. Good luck, man. Uh, yeah, Arturo, so basically, you know how in other products, this is the one thing I guess confusing for customers, but just remember this. For Bowman Draft Baseball, whenever you hear draft, there's Jumbo and Super Jumbo affiliated with them. But just think of it this way. Uh, basically, this version is regular. 
to Bowman Draft and Super Jumbo is Jumbo to the to the regular. So uh, basically, uh, you know, this is just regular hobby for people in draft. Um, but in Bowman Baseball, there's regular hobby and then there's Jumbo. So it's a little confusing, but uh, just know for draft, it just kind of make it a little different. So regular Jumbo is about three autographs, they say. Super Jumbo's five. Whereas to regular hobby, Bowman Baseball, there's what? One autograph? And then Jumbo in Bowman Baseball, there is three autographs. A little bit, Arturo. I mean, more than trying to relate to the other versions of, of baseball. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you can kind of think of it that way. Fast Break's a different variation, but uh, for baseball, it's just one has more autographs, the other one doesn't. But, yeah, I think you can kind of think of it that way. I don't know if you're familiar with Bowman Baseball or not, but it's pretty much like that. It's the same product. It's just, whoa, was that a variation? This actually looks like a variation. It's flip backwards. Is that a photo variation? Because usually it's his him batting stance. So that could be a photo variation right there, guys. Junya with the Yankees. And a green Oswaldo Peraza. One of our first colors. And then we got a black. Wow, this looks nice. Out of 75. 36 out of 75. Um, well, I'm supposed to go on that too, Derek. But I, from my understanding was that Teddy, we're going to try out some daytime breaks. Uh, to see how that market is. Because uh, we might start... We might start actually having shifts and going earlier on Instagram. So, um, I'm supposed to go on at two, but I believe Teddy was supposed to go on for a couple hours before me. So I'm thinking I'm shooting for, he's probably going to go on around 10, maybe 11 for a couple hours. Uh, he's not here yet, but once he gets here, he'll let me know what time he's going to go on. But yeah, we're going to try to, uh, try to, uh, go on during the daytime. I, there's a lot of customers that have been requesting it. So I think we're trying it for a new release and see how that works. But for sure, I'll be on by 2 o'clock, so um, we'll be live, though, regardless. Whether it's with me or Teddy, he'll be on by then. First at Chrome first, or Refractor, I should say, first. And we got Luke Little Blue. Bailey Horn, <clears throat> Robert Pawson, Kurstad Chrome, Kurstad Chrome again. A lot of curse stuff. And we have Lost Bot Mojo Travis getting an Ian Bedell to 250 purple. Very nice. Spencer Torkelson. Water line about 
Yes, Brett. Uh, we're open from 11 to 6 p.m. So yes, if you're uh, if you're here at 11, you can definitely try to get something picked up. Um, just in case it, it it might be a break on the YouTube that you're waiting for. Um, always good to call ahead of time to see if the break is sorted out. But personals uh, is a quick little uh, bag up and 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 uh, pick up really quick, but. If there's any group breaks, just you know, maybe call ahead this at the time of the store when we open up to make sure that your group break is sorted out so that way you don't make the trip down here and then it's not sorted. But if it's personals, that's pretty quick. Quickly just put it together and give it to you guys. And if it's stuff that has been held up for a couple days already, then it should be fine. There was a lot of prison that we sorted out this week, guys, so we were a little behind on shipping, but uh, my wife did get all the shipping out for Prism over the weekend, so I believe breaks that uh, we're sorting today would be uh, some Monday breaks as well, um, and then get that out by by tomorrow and Friday, and get like Monday, Tuesday, hopefully up until today as well. All right, guys. So that was just two boxes. Like I guess I'm getting familiarized with this product. Um, so like I said, uh, let's continue to get these breaks done. Looks like random team is probably going to be the next one we get done. As you can see, it's already down to five left. So that should be good. Uh, looks like pick your team wise. We're at five left and number two. Um, so like I said, you guys want to try that super jumbo. Let's get that rolling too. Um, five left in the next pick your team. Super jumbo is down to five. Then we can easily keep me busy until one o'clock, guys. And a little FYI for customers that like to buy persons with us. I, I was saying it all day yesterday, and I'll say it again today. Um, this isn't a quick rip. You know, this isn't a Panini one and one where it's just one card and, and one autograph. So I wouldn't doubt it if I go look right now. There's already customers that bought a ton of these boxes already, and they want them ripped open. So. Uh, when Teddy goes live and I go live, just got to be patient. Like I said, these, these aren't going to take about a minute to rip. They're going to take about 10, 15 minutes each box. And, of course, depending on the breaker, they take a little longer. So we're going to be live for a while, though, today, guys. I said I don't plan on leaving today for <laughs> a very long time. I'll probably be here super late, uh, depending on how backed up we are with Bowman Draft. But I do know this, though. You know, Bowman Draft and just Bowman products in general, baseball, it's usually its own crowd, so I'm sure there'll be other people ripping other products today on here and on personals. But like I said, the personal is going to take up uh, take a good time to, to do each personal box. So just stay patient, guys. Yeah, it's a fun rip, Arturo. You should definitely get a personal box today if, if, if you're interested. Like I said, this is this is a ton of value in this, guys. Even if you don't know the prospects, that's okay. Because when you rip these personals with us, um, the chat knows these guys. And it's pretty easy, of course, to look up the comps on some of these players on eBay. Man, again, it's just a big hit or miss. But if you're just, just as curious like everybody else and buy personals, there is a lot of value in this. A lot of people love to prospect hunt. And like I said, if these guys turn out to be somebody in the MLB, um, it's pretty strong. Those are actually the going there. Jackson Miller, a glimpse of greatness. It's numbered right here. JJ Blader, the 250. I think we're also selling these by the pack, so. You can even buy packs. Kurt Stad. Garrett Mitchell. Looks like they wanted to stamp this, but they didn't. It's like a blue to a 150, I want to say. Seven out of 150? That stamp is horrible.
this, I guess. So I'm going to try to split these up from like the chromes and papers, put those to the side so we get a little bit more room to work with here. We got Austin Wells to four ninety nine for the Yankees. Torkelson. Ian Bidell. Knack and Tanner Burns. Two blues back to back. That's for Cleveland. Going to Tim Burke. Torkelson. Did we sell out that random teams already? No, one left. So let me quickly, too, guys. I'm just putting the break schedule. I forgot to add it there. Right now, what we're currently doing, so people don't get confused. So, start this is about 30 minutes ago. So, it'll probably take me. Probably take me. What time is it now? 8:55. So, start this at 25. I'm just going to say, just to be safe, let's just call it I'll put this random 
second team up there. That way people realize what's going on there. So yeah, guys, one left in that next random team. I'm sure someone's gonna sell it out right now, so get it rolling. That'll be the next one we can do. Shipping all this. So penny sleeve. Luca rookie PSA six else for five hundred. No, it doesn't shock me. <laughs> People grade so much that it was bound to happen that some people buy these grades. And to be honest, people might just add it to their collection. I wouldn't doubt it if someone's like... I wouldn't doubt it if uh, someone is putting together a PSA 4, 5, 6, 7. <laughs> Actually, it would be pretty cool. And Clayton Beater. That is that how you pronounce it, man. That doesn't sound so nice. Like, no, he beat her. Like what? What are you talking about? I mean, to be honest, we, we don't really know what's going to factor into the PSA 7 or, or 6 or anything like that. I mean, it could honestly be someone just really didn't clean it. And it was just, like, marked up pretty bad. There's a lot of things that factor into what, what determines the PSA 6 or 7. But, yeah, some people might be just be cracking it open, that's all. His hands do you have hands with Cheetos on it or something? I mean, if he sent it into gray without even examining it, like was it even centered right? That's another thing, obviously the centering and everything, but I think for I think for the most part the grades is usually the surface. And people never factor in the back of the car too. So there's a lot to the to the grading than people think. But again, it's the reason why I think uh, PSA is going to be changing soon with the new purchase by a big uh, hobby collector and what his future vision is like for PSA. All right, next box, guys. So we're barely halfway through, guys. This first case was always going to take me the longest just because I'm trying to familiarize with this product. Um, but like I said, once I get it down, I'll fly through more of the paper base and spot these four prospects that I need to pull in penny sleeve. So do not worry, guys. All right, I'll take a look at it, man. Yeah, 
Yeah, we can chat though, Bill. Customer of ours actually showed me some Cardville that he actually pulled from us. Center looks spot on everything. He noticed something very tiny, but he didn't think that it would cause it to grade this bad. But he sent me the grade, and, and it graded like a, it was like a six or something. Ooh, this looks nice. Little ice for the raise to 150. And uh, he, you know, told PSA, why did this grade a six? Everything else was great. And I guess, like I said, something that I really can't see. They told him that if you look at this part of the card, you'll notice that there's like a little indentation that maybe you guys don't see with the eye. But if you guys really take a closer look, you guys can see it. And it was like indented like if someone wrote on the card. And you can see like this long line. And it's just barely can see it. Like I guess so you have to really look closely. And, you know, it was on the back of the card, not even the front of the card. And, uh... So they say they determined to rule it a six. So it's like little, little things that we don't see with our eyes that, you know, can determine what happens there. And yeah, he thinks that obviously it, it happened. Uh, it somehow happened um, with, with either them or straight from Panini. So I know he said he was going to file a, file a claim or something because... When looking at the video here with us, there wasn't anything like that. Man, the blacks out of 75 just pop. Out of 75. So, yeah, he thinks that... I think he told me he was going to try to just crack it, send it to BGS, and, like, if BGS sees that... You know, they can mark that a lower grade, but the overall four subgrades should help it get at least like a nine or something, which he'd be okay with it. But yeah, you know, it's just it's little things like that. It's just crazy. But then, you know, then we see those those PSA 10s that like, what the hell? How is this a PSA 10 with the centering, you know? So that's why I think there's needs to be a little bit of a change. How grading is. Yeah, Joseph, and, you know, at first when he told me that, I was like, shit, you know, was it really us? And then he goes, no, because the thing is that we don't really write on the cards, right? I mean, we have our stickers, so there's no reason to write on the cards. And unless, like I said, unless, like, over-the-top loader, we're freaking just writing something, you know, and just indenting it so hard that through the top loader it looks like it, it uh, it's, like, you know, going through. Because he goes, no, 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 you know, like, because I told him, I was like, well, I mean, I, I can't say it wouldn't be us, but the fact is that we put stickers on all of our stuff, so there's no reason to, like, for us to write on it like that, you know? But, yeah, I mean, I don't think he's the only person like that. I mean, it could be from quality control. It's just little things like that that you really don't see. But, you know, it's, it was just something to think about. I was like, no, I mean, I guess you can't rule us out, right? But it's just kind of more like... It's just kind of hard, because why would we be writing on it like that? Uh, especially when we just put a little sticker over 
over the team bag and there's no reason to write on top of the top load or anything like that. Ryan Jensen. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. You're sure just saying that like, you had one from your own stuff? Yeah, yeah. Because when he told us it, it was a break from us, I'm like, ooh. I was like, okay, well, let's see. And then he like, no, 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 I looked at the video. I, I think it was already like that. It's just, it was just like more of a, how does that even happen? Oh, we got a redemption. Oh, before I show that, actually, let me just put this over here. Hold on. So that's definitely obviously coming from, from the quality control. Maybe it's the players themselves, you know? Actually using the pen to write. To write. Uh, Westberg. Definitely, man. I mean, it's bound, it's bound to happen, but I think m more than usual. And I also believe, obviously, with this whole pandemic, I think they did rush a lot of things. So maybe that's what happened. But there's always little issues here and there, which is understandable. Especially out of the millions of cards they probably print a year. All right, girl. Bowman draft pick autographs. Refractor parallel. So that should be out of 499 of Slade for the Arizona Diamondbacks. There you go. Arizona Diamondbacks. Robert with the D-backs. It's the Lacey Royals. Also, guys. So it's a little, little bent there with some of these paper cards. And it come a little, little bent up through these packs.
The Savior is back, guys. The Savior, Ryan Harold. The, the, the Savior is back. Rest assured. Thomas, see, uh, that's what I was saying. It was kind of just, it kind of just, it had to have been from like quality control. Balmer. Bidell. Getting a lot of cursed at reserve stats are I should say. Uh reserve stat a lot of uh, chrome base. <laughs> I thought I thought five hundred was pretty pricey too, Thomas, but where we're at now, I, I feel like I should have bought some boxes for myself at that price. I remember when we were selling them for, for I think, like 350 400 But the price value of a lot of these players have gone up, though, with the price going up and, and per box, so kind of makes sense. Zion PSA 10 silvers weren't going for like $4,000 or $3,000 the way they are now, so. Kind of makes a little difference. Oh. Owen Miller. Bobby Wood Jr. Blue to 150, and Emerson Hancock to 140 uh, to 499 refractor for the Mariners. That's going to Alex. Bobby Wood uh, Jr. Blue to 150 there.
Yeah, well, Veen auto out of 30, that doesn't sound too bad, Matthew. Sounds pretty strong. Yes, there is, Nick. There's a lot of Dominguez in this, actually. Um, there's Dominguez autographs. There's actually photo variations, which I've already pulled. There'll be chrome colors. Um, there is Dominguez in this, for sure. Not his first, uh, his first uh, cards, but his prospect cards are still going to sell extremely well. Uh, we're shipping all the chrome, man. Anything paper that's not Torkelson, uh, Torkelson, Veen, and everybody else, we're not. As long as it's not those four players. But all his chrome, his color, his autos, for sure. Just no paper base minus those four players. And wow, look at that. Sag Veen color match for the Colorado Rockies to 250. 34 out of 250, Zach Veen, which I do have his Wikipedia page pulled up here, was the ninth overall pick by the Rockies in the 2020 draft. Very, very nice. Alrighty guys, three more boxes.
All right, guys. Next one. Torkelson. Duran Duran. We got che uh, Jeff Criswell. Little speckle. Kristen Robinson, green, paper to 99. My name, Jeff. Dude, I got that guy so good yesterday, Adam. Did you, were you there for that? <laughs> I got this guy really good at, uh, <laughs> on, uh, on Instagram and shit. I don't know if you heard it or not. And uh, Rosario. Uh, Ryan, a lot, man. I mean, I'm sure one full tree, especially with this thin stock of cards, makes a lot. But yes, a lot. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there was a customer yesterday that was like, "Hey, Breaker, what's your name?" <laughs> I saw. It said, <laughs> I was like, my name's Jeff. <laughs> so funny. Spencer Strider. Uh, Casey Martin, I think. Well, we still have three boxes left, including this one here. So two boxes actually left behind me in this box, the third. Um, I think we pulled uh, the... I mean, I guess the best would be... Uh, Zach Veen, purple to 250, right? Hoffman, blue, and Sammy Infante to 99, green. Washington going to Darby. Um, not as much, Tony. Uh, I, I, I did do a handful of player breaks for Sun Mosaic and certain products in the past couple months, but uh, I haven't done any recently, though. Not in the last month, at least. Um, but yeah, I mean, I used to join breaks earlier this year, for sure, around some of the places that I've always uh, liked, liked the atmosphere with, but I mainly did a lot of player breaks on eBay.
looking to get Miles Sanders and McNabb like mosaic base colors and stuff. Ooh, nice, Matthew. Well, honestly, Matthew, he's probably still going to split time with Jonathan Quick. Kings still have him on the roster, and I don't think... I don't think they're just going to hand it to Peterson and give him the bulk. I think that's going to be evenly distributed, and if not, he's still going to probably sit a little bit behind Quick. But I do hope he performs well enough so he can take over, you know? Uh, I think Cal Peterson is really good. Really, really good goaltender in Notre Dame. A little bit on the older side, but I mean, at the same time, I think of goalies, they tend to last a little longer in their careers than most players. So even though he is like a 26-year-old or something like that, 25-year-old, I think he is now, he should be good. Yeah, I mean, he did good in the minors too with the Kings. And hopefully, like I said, he, he does take over at some point. Um, but I still love Jonathan Quick though too, man. I mean, I don't know. Something about Jonathan Quick just always... I just love about him. But I think it'll be good, though. I think him him and Quick, though, are going to do well, hopefully. And, then, you know, if, if Peterson really does take over, then... Even though I wouldn't want this to happen, but some good trade value for Quick maybe out there during playoff time if the Kings aren't really making the playoffs. Ooh, what is this? Look at that. Class of 2020 gold, Robert Hassel. San Diego Padres. Looks very nice, a little color match right there. 31 out of 50. Mark with the Padres. Very nice. Alrighty guys, so I should be done with this a little tad over a minute, an hour and a half, sorry, and maybe a tad over my projected time, but like I said, the, the only thing that has sold out is this Super Jumbo half case break, so 
Looks like the PYT is still at five left for number two. So we still have time to break the next pick your team before Joe gets here. And who knows, maybe people maybe people get into uh, the other side of the random team. We fill off a super jumbo case. Oh. I don't have Snapchat. I love it, man. Thanks for having the same username. What's going on, man? Nice, Ryan. That I don't know, man. I don't know how the I don't know how Upper Deck treats it. If like they just announce it, Ryan, then probably most likely he probably will, because they've already probably printed out series two, to be honest, um, and have the checklist ready to roll. So I think uh, I think it might be held out to the next year. Like when was this? Was it just announced? Several months ago, it could be possible, man. But I wouldn't doubt it that it wouldn't be. Like I said, most of these players, especially right after the draft, they already have their they already have the rest of the year planned out already. You know, for a lot of these players, so it might might be next year. But I guess I can't, I can't rule it out. Like I said, most of these most of the checklist is already pretty much done for most of the year already. That's good though, man. I mean, at least obviously, Islanders get to get a good player over, uh, from uh, from Russia. Lofton and the D backs, ninety nine. I mean that's true. Uh, you you could be right. I was thinking of Igor too right now. Actually, now that you mentioned it, could be the same situation. And if it does, great. If it doesn't, then then yeah, it could be some type of update or something. Or they just hold them out to next year and just have them as a featured rookie. That's usually what happens too. Is that if if it's a little too late. Even though those some of them some of the rookies will be rookies this year, they'll just hold them out to the next year. Infante.
Infante. Yeah, right. We know what. It's just like with me and my Kings. I'm kind of finally happy that Velarde came out towards the end of the year last year, but I'm kind of glad that in in this 2021 draft class of 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 uh, of the hobby, Vel, uh, Gabriel Velarde is finally uh, finally considered a rookie. And we got a little Patrick Bailey, which these flip backwards must have been some type of image variation. So there you go, Giants. So. I'll be happy to finally see him as a full-time rookie this year and then hopefully kill it and uh, collect some of his rookies. It's been a couple years, man. I feel like he's would have come up faster, but he's had some like kind of back injuries that kind of kept him in the minors for a little bit longer than he should have been. Hens. And we got Caden to 499. Polkovic. Torkelson paper. Yeah, yeah, and uh, that's why I always like to think of. Uh, so I always like to relate to the to to baseball because baseball is kind of in the same same boat. The only thing that baseball I think does so well is that people invest on these guys so so young, right? With Bowman. There really isn't a full like product out there that is just big enough and regardly like you know sought out for like yeah there's CHL and like yeah there's AHL stuff but it doesn't compare to like Bowman and stuff but you know yeah it, it's kind of for the hobby purposes there isn't there isn't a there isn't um many products out there that people are gonna buy to invest into like I wish I wish like the NHL would do something like Bowman. Where it's like a first edition, right? You know, you, you, you see... Because, I mean, at, at some point, they're all in their uniforms, right? Whether it's in training camp at some point, then they get sent down to their junior teams or minor league teams. But it would be cool if the NHL did create... Or Upper Deck, should, I should say, did create like a first edition kind of product, you know? That, that'd actually be pretty cool. All these players that get drafted first overall, even if they don't make it to their team, at least you have their first autographs and first stuff like that where... If they end up being somebody, then I feel like, damn, that creates a great market for them. But obviously, upper deck is just more like the traditional way, like basketball and stuff, where if they get drafted that year, they usually most likely get put into a product that year. And if they don't, they hold them out until they're ready to be in a, uh, already called up and I guess play it safe, I should say. Because I guess there's a lot of players that don't make it to the NHL, so maybe that's probably why they don't do it. Yeah, yeah. No, that's true. I think it's less of a risk by just leaving them out until they either make it or they don't make it, right? But yeah, man, I, I miss hockey, to be honest, man. I, I can't wait for that to come back. I think they agreed, right? I think January 13th is starting. can't believe basketball is like legit a week and a half away. It's wild. Training count January 1st for game. Damn, there you go. Whew. We here. We here. No, yeah. I 100% I, I agree, Ryan. If, even for people that don't know hockey and don't don't even care to, to collect it, just go to a hockey game. Minor league, NHL, whatever level. It's so exciting to watch. You know, when I, when I was my wife now, but when I was dating her, when we first started dating uh, in high school, I got, I mean, I was into sports. She really wasn't, but I really got her into hockey and she loves it, man. It's like such a great atmosphere. 
you know, it's it's such an exciting sport to watch live. Energy is nothing, nothing like it's just the craziest thing. It's just so crazy. We went to playoff games together. We went to like Kings. We, well, we were dating. I mean, we we're still obviously dating when they started winning those Stanley Cups. But you know, she really got into it where to the point where like we were going to playoff games. We were. Uh, Going to watch the Kings come fly home, playing against the uh, winning Game Seven against Chicago. <laughs> it was so fun. Obviously, much more exciting when your team's winning, but in general, to this day, we still like to go to hockey games if there's a possibility with work. And yes, Jay, you are right. Uh, the players in hockey are much more humble. Don't get me wrong; there are players that I feel like are a little rude. But if you approach some of these players at their training facilities, they uh, they are uh, very nice and and will take photos and autographs for you. But I don't blame. I mean, I don't know. I don't blame the players though. If they see you with a stack of like twenty cards and they're like, "Hey, can you sign these all for me?" Like, I don't know. I feel like maybe as a player, I would get bothered like that. But if you're just there with a one photo, one jersey, or you know, with your with a little family, I mean, I, I would not mind signing autographs, but but I've seen people like that. They'll be like, "Hey, Kopitar here. I got like a stack of twenty photos. Can you sign all these for me?" <laughs> it's like, "Come on, dude! Like, make it so obvious." Yeah, Ryan. My, I, 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 I went to a lot of playoff games that year, two thousand and fourteen. I went to Game Four, first series when when they turned it around from San Jose and did the reverse sweep. I would like to tell people I was, I was the reason why they came back and won because I decided to go to Game Four and pay like a ton of money to go see them and sit in the, in the 300 section. Um, I went to Game One against Anaheim. I feel like I had to go to Game One, first time Kings and Ducks playing in the playoffs together. Um, seeing that game, Aaron Gabrick scored in overtime. It was great. Went to Game Seven. That one was more spontaneous than just rattling nowhere. I was so nervous that game because I was like, I, I just can't have the Kings lose. To the Ducks, second round. I feel like they're destined to win again. And uh, so me and my wife, my wife just said, F it, like, let's go to the game. And we legit just hopped on StubHub, found some tickets. We drove down and got there, like, right on time. Went to the game, and it was a blowout. It was fun. And then I went to the next series against Chicago to one game. Uh, yeah, that game seven series, though, against Chicago, Jay, was... I swear, I, I, might have, I must have had, like, three mini heart attacks in that series. That game seven was the craziest game. <laughs> so up and down. Like, they're up 2 nothing, then they tie it. They, they're down 2-3, then they tie it. I, that game was wild. The only game I didn't go to was the Stanley Cup Finals. My sister, at the time, had season tickets. And uh, she had game one and game five, the game they won. And... Uh, she ended up taking my older brother, which is the one that got us all into hockey. So it was a good moment for him. He was, he got to see a King Stanley Cup. It was awesome. But no, I mean those those years of the Kings are so exciting because, I mean, first year they win, second year they lose in the Western Conference Finals to the Blackhawks, then the next year they go to the Stanley Cup Finals and win. Those three straight years like that, going to the Western Conference Finals and Stanley Cups, was amazing. But yeah, it definitely was like two heavyweights swinging at each other for sure. So if they don't ever win anytime soon, I'll cherish those moments forever. But yeah, I'm sure it was very sad for Ranger fans. Because, <laughs> you know, honestly, that game, that, that the first, I mean, all those games actually against the Rangers were all either in overtime or, you know, the Rangers were up by like a couple of goals. It was just unfortunate they couldn't keep the lead. So if I was a Rangers fan, I'd be very just devastated. So thankfully I didn't have to feel that. Max Meyer, Dax Fulton, the 250. I mean, I guess I would still cherish the moment that at least they went to the finals, but it was, <laughs> I would have been so emotional, man. I'm emotionally scarred with like the Eagles losing in 2004 because 
It still gets me to this day. Still gets me to this day. But, yeah, having Justin Williams on our side was amazing. Honestly, I, I don't mind him winning the Conn Smythe, but Kopitar had an amazing year that that playoff series. He actually ended up having he actually ended up having the most points for the Kings, but I think they I don't think they got the stats right. Either he was exactly tied with Justin Williams or he had one more. But Kopitar was amazing in that series too. So was Gabrick. I think Gabrick had the most goals. He had like twelve. Jackson Miller. The two fifty. Cincinnati Reds going to Michael. <laughs> Justin Williams, man, I love that dude too, man. Glad he went back to, to Carolina. You know, all those, I, I mean, him him performing in Game 7 with Carolina the first time, you know, performing with the Kings, even when he went to Washington after us, that dude was scoring in Game 7s too, and I, I honestly believe that he was going to win a Stanley Cup there with the Capitals, and I don't think he ended up being part of the Stanley Cup of the Champions team that the Capitals did, won with Ovechkin, but... Man, he was just—he just made you believe. <laughs> if he was on a playoff team, that it was not gonna—he was not gonna go down without a fight. That's for sure. That dude is something else. Like you know, I feel like he ha he i feel like he has to have some consideration to the Hall of Fame because of how so good he was in the playoffs, like stat-wise. I know it's kind of hard to say that because, you know, Hall of Fame is more for, like, personal accomplishments and, like, regular season more than anything. But, man, when that dude was in the playoffs, he was something else. He was just clutch. Whoop. Owen Miller to 150. Matthew Dyer for the Mets. That was one of the last few teams taken as well. Michael getting that. And it's out of 71. I realize the Speckles are out of 71 this year. 18 out of 71. Very nice. All right, guys, we're almost at the finish line, guys. So I think I'm, I will definitely be much faster in the next case break, but I feel like these are definitely going to take for sure at least an hour, hour and 10, hour and 15 minutes without any pack stacking help. Maybe with pack stacking, maybe an hour. Uh, but like I said, I wanted to make sure I can kind of familiarize with a lot of these uh, four players in paper so that way I can skim through it faster and I'll have to worry that I missed anything but don't worry if I did miss anything guys I will go through this off camera once I'm done breaking to make sure that at least with my breaks I, I caught this stuff and I know the shipping team of course usually goes through the paper to make sure as well so I said if, we, if you feel like we missed something don't worry
Should be one more autograph fighting here. And there we go. Max Meyer. To 250, class of 2020. Yeah, I feel like we've gotten at least like 10 Torkelson papers and like at least another 5, 6 Chrome, which is going to add up, man. It's crazy. Instead of you go out and maybe potentially grade some of these, they come back a great grade. It's like pretty strong. Kershat is one we had a lot, though. It's like that dude was all over the place. All right, guys, so let's try to go through a little quick recap. Um, give me like a minute or so. I'm trying to put all of these. Uh... So these are all just the chrome cards here. Or refractors, you want to say. Max, what's going on, man? Almost done, guys. Just want to organize this. I don't think he's going on to 11, Adam.
Last one right here, just double checking these. All right, cool, guys. So here you go. Let's do a quick little recap. So again, all those stacks you see right there are just the refractors. Um, of potentially, obviously, first Bowman's first, and just refractor prospects. I did separate all the Torkelsons, Hassel, uh, Jerstad, and Veen. So I can just show you guys. Regardless, of course, if these guys didn't get any autographs. There was still at least like one paper, two, three, four, five, six, chrome, seven, eight, nine, chrome, ten, eleven. Um, there might be some Torquils that I might have top loaded too, but that's a little Torquils and stack. So it will add up. Zach Veen, still again as well. The chromes and the papers there. Because I feel like in this case, not sure if they're all going to be the same, but. A lot of uh, Jurstad right here, a lot of chromes. Two, two there. Refractors. Another three paper, another refractor, another more four, four more papers of refractors, and a couple base. So Orioles right there. Nice little come up there with that dude. And then Hassel. Couple papers, couple chromes. Very, very nice. And again, we will top load all those for you as well. Here was the other color that may have popped out of here. Some of them are numbered like the blues, speckles. Some of them are non-numbered. Let's quickly skim through them so you guys can see them all. Bobby Witt right there, nice blue color match. Very nice. And then here were the autos and bigger hits, of course. So we got Dyer to 71 Speckle. We got Max Meyer to 250 Class of 2020. We got Jackson Miller to 250 Purple for the Reds. Phillies, Casey Martin to 150. We have the Seattle Mariners Bowman's first here of Caden. This was an image variation of Patrick Bailey. We got Infante. We got a Robert Hassel gold to 50. That was a big prospect right there. Another Sammy Infante. This time it was numbered to uh, green to 99. Rosario to 499. Zach Veen to 250, of course. It was another big one. Big prospect there for the Colorado Rockies. Hancock to 499. Warren. Lacey. Redemption here. Slade for the D-backs. Garza. Black out of 75. Looks awesome. Burns to 150. Beater. Austin Wells for the Yankees, Henry, Carter, Dominguez, which is an image variation. Peraza to 99. Uh, Holden Poil to 75 black. B. Dell, a Strider orange to 25. And Dylan Dingler for the Detroit Tigers. So there you go, guys. That was the Bowman Draft 8 box jumbo case break. Pikachu's number one on jazbeescasebreaks.com. The next one's in the store, guys. And we are at five left. Uh, if you guys want to try to get the next one rolling, uh, stuff I've left. Appreciate it, guys.